The best tech stack for freelancing is maybe not what you would expect. You have to think, where is the money flowing? Where is the money flowing online and where can I stand to get wet to take advantage of the ecosystem? So when you think money, you think transactions, buying, selling, goods being exchanged. And in the context of the internet, that means one thing, e-commerce. Now there's one e-commerce platform in particular that has done at this point almost a trillion dollars in transactions. And that platform is Shopify. The mistake most people make is thinking Shopify is just like a website builder, but it's really not. It's closer to WordPress where it's a whole on platform ecosystem that you can do multiple things on. And it might even be more powerful than that. So if you know a front end web stack, like you've got JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and throw a framework on there too, React, you can do pretty much anything within the Shopify ecosystem. That is making themes, building apps, and building custom web app front ends for the Shopify API. So as fast as this industry is growing, people are trying to get on Shopify, migrate. They're trying to upgrade their stores to Shopify Plus. They're trying to have custom features in their store that the competitors don't have. Increase conversions by adding new functionalities as well. There's just so many opportunities for developers and not enough people are talking about this. Now adding even more fuel to the fire, you have COVID. Now what that means is if you're a store, you have to migrate to e-commerce or you're pretty much screwed. Your in-person business is dropping. People don't wanna go places in person as much. You might even be mandated to be closed for a specified amount of time. So while the demand was high, it gets pushed even higher by the pandemic. Okay, you're skeptical, I get it. At best, you think I'm trying to sell something. At worst, I'm actually getting paid by Shopify to say this. Who knows? But what I think we can both agree on is some hard data to back up what I'm saying. So I'm here in Upwork, which is one of the top freelancing platforms. You can post jobs here. You can get freelancing jobs here. Personally, I do not recommend using Upwork as a freelancer. They take a huge cut, pretty much 20% of everything you make. And as a freelancer, you have almost no power if you get a bad client that they can leave you a bad review and kind of ruin your entire profile. And finally, there's a lot of competition which can kind of drive your rates down and you don't really own your client relationships. So everything has to go through the platform or you can get banned. So a lot of reasons not to use Upwork and I do have a different, much better strategy. But anyway, what it's still good for is looking at the relative supply and demand for developers in different stacks. So that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So what I've recommended in the past to get a job or a remote job is to learn React. But the environment is kind of different if you're trying to do freelancing. So let's just search in this box for React and see what comes up. So these are all the jobs that people have posted looking for, maybe people who know React. So the first thing we can see is 316 jobs found. These are active job postings that haven't been filled yet. And this is a pretty good way to relatively measure demand. So we have this 316 number, which isn't great, but it isn't bad either. And we can kind of just scroll down through the jobs and ignoring the hourly rates because a lot of them are kind of lowballing or just not accurate for one reason or another. Um, and we can see that the jobs are kind of, you know, potentially good for React developers, but a lot of them have actually kind of custom requirements that might disqualify you. So what do I mean by that? Well, we have React Native here. So if you're just a React web developer, um, then you might not know React Native. So you couldn't do this job. This one has nothing to do with React. Well, I guess it does, but you'd be not even a developer here. This is backend, so I'm not sure why this is tagged with React. Chrome extensions kind of have their own ecosystem you need to know. This one requires InVision, <laughs> video streaming, React Native. Um, funny enough, there's a Shopify one. But just scrolling down, you can see that this one, all the way at the bottom, is kind of the first one that's like actually just legit React and Node.js TypeScript, which is kind of a standard React stack. But the problem is this one has 50 plus proposals. So those three factors, a high level of proposals means there's a high supply of developers. Um, a 316 jobs found means there's like a medium demand for developers and 
most of all, the disqualifying thing means this 316 is actually a lot lower. And that's just because you can have different kinds of React stacks that you probably don't qualify for. So let's do this same little search trick with Python. We'll just search for the whole language of Python and see what comes up. So Python has almost the same as React, which is 326, which is kind of surprising because React is a framework within JavaScript and Python is an entire language. And funny enough, you know, people are learning Python the most, but there's actually not that many real jobs. And I've actually said this in the past, but you know, for whatever reason, people want to learn Python. So scrolling down again, we'll see kind of the same issue where you know, you need some specialized skills to actually do these jobs. Just Python isn't enough. Like this one's natural language processing. Um, machine learning is here. Machine learning again. You could be a tutor, not really a developer. So again, in this case, the 326 is going to actually be much lower if you just know Python. So it's kind of same problems as React. Now, if we search for Shopify, okay, then we will actually see that there's over 1,000 jobs and it's very different because you'll notice instead of looking for a specific stack or a specific kind of person and I didn't even mention that a lot of these Python jobs I just hit the back button they also require experience so like just scrolling down let's see this um, yeah a lot of them will actually say we need a senior developer or someone with x levels of experience okay i just forgot to say that before um like example would be like this one experienced python developer that has built microservices in the past and then you know there's like a ton of different requirements here. Now let's go back over to Shopify. So I just search Shopify. We get the thousand jobs. So it's got three times as much demand for developers. And if we just look through these, the requirements are pretty much just less skill based and more outcome based. So someone has a problem with the Shopify platform and they're really just looking to, to find someone who can actually do what they need. So someone has just you know a domain they want to get their website up um, another person maybe just wants to optimize their SEO and another person just wants to have their website created so right away we've got higher demand for developers we've got less disqualifying and as you can see these proposal counts are really low 5 to 10 10 to 15 5 to 10 15 to 20, but I don't see any 50 plus on the first page. Um, and I would guess that there is not on the second page either. Yeah, 20 to 50 is the highest I see. So that's all looking pretty good uh, for people looking for a Shopify job. So the final thing I wanna show you, and this is kind of the craziest thing of all, so hopefully you've stuck with me for this long. I'm gonna switch it back over to the freelancer and agency search. Uh, which actually allows you to search on the other end. So if I'm hiring, I can search for a specific person to hire rather than doing a job post. And what I'm going to do is type in Shop Shopify expert and see what comes up. Okay, so we've got some people with a wide range of hourly rates. This guy's charging 250 an hour, which is pretty crazy. But let's just click on this first person, Stephanie D, right here because I think this will be accurately represent what a Shopify expert is. Um, and I wanna use this person to illustrate <laughs> a very probably surprising point. So what, we've ha what we have here is a top rated person on Upwork uh, who's actually been invited 37 times to be hired. So there's a super high demand for this person's services and they're charging an hourly rate that if you worked full-time hours at this rate, it would actually be 250,000 per year. So that's pretty damn good. Now scrolling down, we can see that on the left, this person doesn't have any special education. They're just general studies. And it looks like they didn't even finish. They're only there for three years. Um, but here is the crazy thing I wanna show you. So scrolling down to the skills section, we can see this person actually can't code. All they really know how to do is some basic design and they know how to uh, set up Shopify websites, okay? Now, this is what I wanna show you guys. Pre-packaged products, projects are flat rate projects you can get done that are not on an hourly rate. And just look at this right here. 
template Shopify website for one, $3,500 to $12,000. Now you might think, okay, for that price, they're doing something crazy. I mean, look at all these things they're listing. But these things are actually really easy to do when you understand the Shopify ecosystem and you don't even need to code. Now, we're not done yet. So just scrolling down to the bottom, custom Shopify website. This is a flat rate package deal, 12,000 to 50,000. 12,000 to 50,000. So you can make 50K from one site, <laughs> which is above a yearly salary or twice a yearly salary for a lot of people. And if you're doing this abroad, that's basically like a king salary, all right? And all this is, is a template Shopify site, probably with some custom coding, okay? So if you know how to code, and I'm assuming since uh, Stephanie D can't code, she's just outsourcing the development work, but if you can do this in-house, you can basically be coming away with five-figure deals in Shopify. So this is really just what I wanted to point out and why Shopify is just insane right now to get into. And I also just want to add that this is just for theme development and store setup. There is much more you can do within the ecosystem. You can, like I said, build React web apps, build apps for the Shopify app store, which has an insane amount of opportunity. It's kind of like the Apple app store 10 years ago uh, and much more. So we're just scratching the surface with this example. So anyway, I'm going to send you back over to me talking and uh, we'll wrap up this video. This is the exact stack we're going to be learning in my freelance developer bootcamp. How to build every different type of thing on the platform. When it comes to freelancing too, development is only half of the equation. The other half is business development. You're doing branding, marketing, sales, copywriting, cold outreach, generating clients from leads. And we are going to cover that equally, if not more, than the development aspects in the program. And there's going to be this environment where everyone is selling around you, closing deals. You can see the stats going up and down. And it's just going to be an amazing environment for not only learning, but making money during the program. There's actually 12 weeks. And these are some of the topics. If you want to like pause the video, it's up to you. But that's every week's topic. So if that sounds good, check out more details, freemote.com.